Christmas greetings to you all from a warm day in Johannesburg. We who live in the Southern Hemisphere have Christmas during our summer season. Uh, and when we look at some of the Christmas cards and we see snow, we realize that in other parts of the world, Christmas occurs during winter when it is snowing. So there are different experiences of Christmas. I remember growing up uh, and Christmas was a day where me and uh, my sisters and many of my friends in our communities, that was the day where we wore new clothes. And so we would, we would wait in anticipation on Christmas Day where our parents will give us new our new clothes and we'll get dressed. And then we knew that the friends in the same neighborhood will also be having the same experience. And in our new clothes, we would uh, go to um, mass, we come back and then we will be dancing in the streets and visiting uh, different homes. And uh, homes would be open uh, for us to come in and you know eat all kinds of treats. And it was really a community celebration. Unfortunately, uh, that spirit of communal uh, celebration has been lost, I think, through the commercialization of Christmas, which is affecting us uh, even in the Southern Hemisphere. So the reason for giving this background is that in the gospel readings, we see uh, John, the gospel writer, uh, presenting to us Christmas in a different way. He doesn't take us to the manger as we are used to, where we would see baby Jesus uh, surrounded by shepherds with his parents and uh, kings coming from the east offering presents. That is the normal way in which we have understood, at least I have understood Christmas. But in today's readings, John takes us behind the scenes and takes us to the origin of Christmas. And that is understanding who Jesus is. Jesus is not just the baby in the manger. We know that when uh, the angel Gabriel um, made the annunciation, he told, uh, the angel told Mary uh, that the son who will be born of her shall be called the son of the most high God. And John begins. Uh, his Christmas story with Jesus behind the scenes as the son of God, as the one through whom creation was brought about. And so he takes us to places that we had never been, we had never thought uh, in order to deepen our understanding of the purpose of Christmas. Uh, the text is very rich uh, and to go through every uh, verse would take us the whole day, but I just wanted to pick up on three aspects from the gospel readings. And we find that, um, you know, the, the divine status of Jesus is also emphasized uh, in the readings in the book of Hebrews, uh, which is also part of the uh, lectionary for today. And so John takes us, as I said, to uh, the behind the scenes where we see Jesus as the son of God, we see him as God as well. And what we read in this uh, passage is that Jesus became one with humanity. We call this the incarnation, which means God breaking into the reality of human experience and taking fully that identity. And in doing that, uh, Jesus speaks about the invitation to humanity, to those who believe, so that they will get a new identity as the daughters and sons of God. And so the whole message of, Christ, of Christmas is God through Jesus taking on the human form so that human beings could have that direct and immediate contact with God wherever they found themselves in. And this is astonishing. 
uh, that God could take the form of a human person in order to be able to communicate and to draw humanity back to God. And so I want to also pick up on the point uh, that when we that when we are called the daughters and sons of God, it is assumed from the text that just as Jesus came to reveal God so that those who came to him could encounter the love, the generosity, and the justice of God, that that same identity calls us to do the same, that through us, people will encounter God. And whether we like it or not, many people look to us to reveal who God is. And so we have the responsibility to bring those who come to us to a moment where they encounter the love of God, the justice of God through our actions, through the way we treat people. So that Christmas is not a once-off event that happens on the 25th of December, but it is a calling at the very core of our identity that we are a Christmas people. And what we mean is that just as Jesus, who brought the first Christmas, did it in a way in which he became the revelation of God so that those who encountered him encountered God. Jesus leaves the same mission to us to be a Christmas people where those who encounter us in our families, in our neighborhoods, in our workplaces, encounter God. I know it may feel overwhelming, but Jesus gives us that commission to be those who take the Christmas message of joy and liberation and good news to all people in a world that is polarized, in a world that is fragmenting, where people at the very core of their being are feeling this kind of fragmentation, uh, this sense of loss, particularly after COVID, that we become those through whom they encounter the love and the acceptance of God, irrespective of any aspect of their identity. So to celebrate Christmas means that we cannot celebrate Christmas without taking the core of Christmas to become a Christmas people. And that means to make God's love and justice tangible and experience in the world so that the presence of God through us can become the celebration, the celebration of Christmas. Christmas cannot be celebrated without people experiencing the mercy and the love of God in tangible ways. And the only way they can do that is through us. We are Christmas. Christmas is waiting to happen through us. Let us be a Christmas people. God bless you.